All right, good evening. This meeting of the Arlington Redevelopment Board is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12th, 2020, due to the state of its emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the COVID-19 virus, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings and as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. For tonight's meeting, the redevelopment board is convening via Zoom as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating via video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other people may be able to see you and, that, and take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. So I will take a roll call to confirm that all of the redevelopment members are present. Uh, we'll start with Ken Lau. Here. David Watson. Present. present. Eugene Benson. Present. Katie Levine Einstein. Present. And Rachel Zemberry, I am present as well. And we have uh, Jennifer Raitt. Present. present. And Aaron Zwerko joining us as well. Present. present. Rachel, Rachel, we're having, having that, that uh, echo, echo issue again. Yeah. Yeah. I apologize. That hasn't happened to me in any of my other Zoom meetings. Well, I'm going to turn it right over to uh, Jenny for the first um, item on our agenda, and then I'll hit mute. Um, did it, just out of curiosity, did it correct itself on Monday? Okay. Um, so the first item on our agenda, and before I get started, I just want to let you know we are up against a 6.30 um, end time, needing to make sure that we're wrapped up by then. So I'm gonna try and keep everybody on schedule. So we're gonna start with a review of the fiscal year 22 Arlington planning and community development objectives. Okay, great, thank you. I, um, I just need to bring that up. So, um, so hi everybody, uh, it's been a while and definitely not everybody in this group had been part of the last time we set goals. Um, so this might be a new process, but the last time we did it, the last couple of times we did it, we talked about the what the department is planning to do for the coming year. Um, and that then led to us reviewing the goals of the ARB. Um, and the, the reason for that is that my department provides staffing to the board, obviously, and so we want to make sure we're on the same path in terms of what you would like to achieve and what we need to change, et cetera. So we want to look at what we did this past year as part of our planning for the, for the next year, obviously. So we'll get into that next, but first just to introduce you to what we're planning to do next year with the department. Um, for those of you who need to be, uh, you know, need the sort of an update, the department has nine staff, which includes uh, people who do work on economic development, conservation, energy efficiency, um, and management, um, a senior planner who works on a range of projects, Aaron, who works as the assistant director and also works on housing, um, and, uh, and then basically um, administrative support staff and myself. <laughs> so it is, uh, it's actually, it's, it's a big group in one way, but it's a small group because we have a lot of various things to achieve. And you can see that in what we are planning to do for the next year, which looks similar to what we do most years, um, which is in essence to implement the strategies that are outlined in the Arlington Master Plan, which is our adopted uh, document from 2015. Um, it is the document that we use that really is the umbrella around most of what we do. Um, the master plan was not as comprehensive as perhaps we all would have liked. So we have done, we have taken some new steps and worked on some newer a action plans that don't necessarily directly relate to chapters in the master plan, but are certainly in the spirit of things that the town is trying to achieve. So for example, we will have completed by next, early next year, uh, the Connect Arlington plan. And so there's a, a actually a public meeting next Monday night, which hopefully many of you will be able to attend um, to help us to uh, look at the strategies and implementation plan for our long range transportation plan, uh, which is called Connect Arlington. 
and then of course begin to implement the near term strategies and the plan over the next year. And that will include some zoning recommendations, but I don't have enough information about it just yet because we're still finalizing, we're still in a final planning stage of that uh, process. Um, you are familiar with the net zero action plan. We've talked a little bit about that in the past and a couple of you have participated in conversations with the Clean Energy Future Committee. And we also anticipate that that plan will be wrapping up early in the next year um, with also some recommendations. I do think though that there's at least one recommendation or two from that plan that are probably ready for um, sort of daylight and potentially uh, something that we can advance to a, a more imminent town meeting. Um, and then we have a number of other plans, uh, including our open space and recreation plan, which actually will be uh, in, uh, working on a new uh, open space recreation plan for the next five years. That's going to be starting next year. Um, we just hired Horsley Witten to uh, start that process and it kicks off in January. We have the housing production plan, which is uh, the five years concludes next year. And so we're in the we have an RFP for that, and we will be hiring a consultant to help us to draft that new plan as well. That's a five-year plan as well. Um, and then we've been working on a fair housing action plan, but it, it really, that probably is the one process this year that really got stalled the most by COVID due to a number of complications um, along the way. And so that one is still not completed, unfortunately, but we anticipate that it will be completed next year. Um, and then all of the things that we typically work on, arts and culture action planning. Um, we just received funding through the Community Preservation Act to work on the Minuteman Bikeway Vision Plan. Uh, we're working on an archeological reconnaissance uh, survey for townwide, the stormwater management plan. Um, this is the planning department. So <laughs> there's there are a lot of plans um, and they all require some sort of level of a public process. Um, with multiple phases, but ultimately result in some set of recommendations that we then need to take a look at. Um, and so everything on top of that is really all of our day-to-day -day work, including uh, obviously zoning work that we do um, on a regular basis, the permitting processes, some of which you are all involved in, but a lot of it you're not involved in, including work that we do with the Conservation Commission, um, work that we do for the Zoning Board of Appeals, and uh, also work reviewing a variety of uh, documents and applications and licenses for the select board. Um, and then uh, continuing to do a number of other, implement a number of other uh, activities, uh, including work that we had started uh, a few years ago on Whittemore Park, um, street uh, scape improvements in, for Mass Ave phase two, which is a long range project. Um, continuing to work on bus rapid transit, um, to work on uh, obviously our community development block grant program as an entitlement community. We are we have a number of things that we're working on. And of course, this year has been pretty significant with two additional rounds of funding on top of our regular implementation of the community development block grant program. Um, I don't know if we'll have, you know, everything hinges on a federal government with a wonderful response to state and local governments uh, and a big infusion of money could definitely happen and it could result in even more CDBG dollars coming to the community, which will take uh, staff time, of course, to coordinate and implement. So I don't, I don't call that out specifically, but um, it is something that could also, we anticipate could happen. Um, and uh, we also have two pretty significant 40B comprehensive permits uh, happening right now and my staff are helping uh, with some of the review related to Thorndick Place. And then we anticipate that the other 40B that just received its project eligibility letter at 1165 R Mass Ave will also be filing relatively soon and will also entail a, a large review process. Um, so that's, that's kind of a glimpse uh, because this is basically what gets published in the annual financial plan. I have, uh, recognize that it's important to not tell everybody everything about <laughs> every little thing that we do. <laughs> um, but if you look back at any of the number of the past four years, you'll see that it's quite voluminous, the work that happens um, in the department. Um, and that we're at a point now where a lot of the things that we're working on are very well integrated. 
so that the net zero action plan is speaking to the Connect Arlington long-term transportation plan. And that we're also looking through things through an equity lens, even though we don't have a fair housing action plan, we're trying to um, look at things through an equity planning process as well. Um, and you know, a number of the other initiatives that we're working on, I see them as being uh, sort of stacked and integrated with one another very much so. So while there's a lot of details to share, I just wanted to make sure that you understood the, the suite of things that the department is working on in the, in the coming year. Um, and that that will help you to then think about the things that you would like to accomplish as a board. Um, and on that note, I will say I've reviewed the what you had hoped to accomplish this current year and recognize that there's many items that we didn't get to this year for obviously a number of reasons. And so we can, I hope that we can talk more about that next. But I, I entertain any questions about the department's plans, Ken? Yeah, I, I, um, I just wanna see if we can maybe, just, well, thank you for all that stuff you do. I, I mean, that is a, a quite an impressive list you got there, uh, Jenny. And that's a lot of, uh, a lot to get accomplished. Uh, I just wonder if, um, we can also add in there um, to look into uh, the business business corridor or the industrial zone. And that's something that we always wanted to look in. And I want to make that as part of one of the points that we should. Um, um, yes, but that's, uh, I, I think we had, I think we had to, we had to do a little bit more than just that, just uh, work with property owners. I think we have to uh, give, um, Let's, let's talk a little more about that, how we can do encouragements or how we can encourage uh, property owners um, to, to do what, uh, to do more commercial or to do more uh, industrial because they're not, they're not going to do it on their own. They're going to do what makes them money. And that's something we're going to have to uh, encourage them uh, to do. And then uh, part of that was the, you put out a nice R RFP. I saw that um, for the modeling of all the spaces there. Mm -hmm. Have we got any responses back for that? And how's that integrated into this thing here? Um, it would be in the ARB's goals, which is what we're going to talk about. So I didn't write that up yet, but I figured okay. that that will be, that's one of the items that we're going to talk about. Okay, sorry. And this is, I, this, I... No, no, you're, you're, you're reading my mind too. I, yes, it belongs in the, but it will belong, it, it will belong in a section that I haven't written yet because that's what we're talking about tonight, um, which is the, the 3D modeling. Um, and no, we don't have, so I, I need to get one more response to that RFP. Great. Um, and then I just want to point out what the, to, in, in response to the first thing you said about a little more than encourage, uh, this, these are just objectives. So they're not, <laughs> They're not my full on action plan for getting everything done or any of the staff uh, in the department. It's just a, a higher level objective. Okay, do we have committees or a committee uh, that's working on that alone? Uh, similar to you, we have a committee for like housing. Do we have a committee for, uh, for commercial development businesses? Um, well, we have a lot of we have a lot of groups that we work with in the community through uh, you know the business groups, but we don't ha we have the zoning bylaw working group. That's really the that's been the primary group working on zoning, including industrial zoning, which we are going to talk about uh, not in depth tonight, but on the twenty first. So um, maybe we can put a pin in the in how we approach that after that or that night um, to talk more about how to how to implement those sorts of ideas that you you might have and, and David's been participating in that process. Okay. Um, in the spirit of time, I'll at, see if there's any other comments about this and then we should probably move into the other, the review. Maybe, no? It looks like there, are there any other comments? Great, let's go ahead and move right into the uh, 2020 goal review. Here it is. <laughs> it's, um, we drafted this document 
after 2019 town meeting. And I think we had uh, some good discussion about ways to, in particular, uh, revisit the housing conversation. And that, of course, led to other conversations with the select board. Um, but th so that's that's partially what's happening in this document. And then we talked about other other strategies of things that we wanted to take actions we wanted to take on zoning. Um, this is divided into four sections. There's also a section about long range planning, uh, the properties, and then how to support community planning goals. So um, I don't think I need to say much more about it. I'll just let um, anybody ask questions or for anybody who feels like you would like to continue this as a goal or if you want to add something new would be my my suggestion for how to approach this um, part of the discussion. Go ahead, Rachel. Jenny, before we um, jump into that, I know that we have a lot of things coming up um, potentially for this upcoming town meeting, which the warrant is already open uh, for, uh, even though we just finished the last one. Can you top line um, a, a list of those those zoning, um, because there are so many items with impact on zoning, can, can you top line for us what those are? Because I think that'll probably play into this discussion as well. You're on mute, sorry. Sorry. Um, I was trying not to have the speaker problem. Um, so I just changed on my screen the uh, the zoning amendments. Do you see that or do you see the other document? I'm sorry. Sometimes you still see the first document. Yeah. All right. Yay. Um, all right. So the this is a this represents what I believe we would like to propose for spring town meeting. This does not represent the entire universe of potential zoning amendments. These also, by the way, are just zoning warrant articles. Um, the department of course deals with town bylaw amendments as well as uh, zoning bylaw amendments. Um, so for the new things that the board hasn't talked about yet, include the three things on the top of the list. The first one is we need to update our marijuana um, section of the bylaw to uh, now comply with, or potentially comply with uh, marijuana delivery. We need to discuss it at, at a minimum. Um, and uh, that, so that's the main update to that section of the bylaw. But we don't have the regulations yet from the Cannabis Control Commission. That's what CCC means. Um, when we have them, that'll help us to know how to uh, make a proposed amendment. Uh, the second item is what we're gonna talk about in depth on the 21st at that meeting with the consultant um, RKG and Harriman. Um, about the recommendations for zoning amendments to the industrial zoning districts, um, zoning district. Um, and it's based upon an economic analysis that we've been conducting for the past year led by Aaron. And I think there's, a, I think, I think that the way that the, the zoning is basically drafted, perhaps with a few, you know, minor tweaks. Uh, some of those are things that we just need to discuss that could be substantive issues. Um, but for the for the most part, it's already ready to go. And so I would like to be able to keep that conversation going. Um, the third item is there's two items actually from the net zero action plan that appear to be uh, items that we think, again, in the uh, things that are sort of in a more uh, ready, <laughs> like uh, easy to uh, amend our existing zoning bylaw to incorporate those items. One of them is a solar ready bylaw. This is something that Jean had actually brought up and I think is actually in our current goals to talk about solar uh, planning. And it's something that's in the net zero action plan as well. Um, the other item from the net zero action plan is about um, addressing the issue of building foundations in order to create it so that any new homes that are created are net zero uh, ready. I'm not sure exactly what the terminology is <laughs> to give you, but. Uh, that wouldn't be something that I think we would file, but there seems to be some, uh, at least some of the members from the Clean, Clean Energy Future Committee who are interested in pursuing that. But I figured the Solar Ready bylaw was one that I know Jean had had expressed an interest in and perhaps others. And so I wanted to make sure to put that on the list. Um, so those are really the three new, newest things. 
this long list of 2020 articles in, are basically all administrative amendments. Some of them were deferred from 2020 annual town meeting. And then the last three items are new. Um, so that the, the first eight you've seen before. Then uh, the new one, uh, that's the ninth item under that list is to remove gendered terms from our zoning bylaw. There's not that many, but there's just enough. Um, one is too many. <laughs> um, this 10th item is to correct the upper story building step back, which was based upon how it was actually adopted at 2016 annual town meeting does not reflect the language in our zoning bylaw, which has caused a lot of problems. And so we need to make that administrative adjustment. In fact, the attorney general's office version that was adopted is not what is reflected in our zoning bylaw. So we need to make that correction. And then the last one is we haven't actually adopted our the official zoning map for some time. The, the version that we have says that it's for use for like printing purposes, <laughs> um, you know, for planning purposes. And we need to have, we, need, we should readopt the zoning map. Uh, because I think that in the future, for some future town meeting, perhaps a special town meeting in um, next year, 2021, um, we'll have more zoning amendments that relate to zoning map changes. We need to have an official zoning map, I think, to, to make any more of those changes would be my, my recommendation. And I believe based upon our experience with Article 21 would be Aaron's recommendation. Um, and I don't want to put words in her mouth. She's muted. Um, and then the last suite of items here, these five items, are things that are holdovers from 2020 annual town meeting that were uh, citizen petitions um, that were not refiled for the special town meeting. Uh, and so they'd be contingent upon the petitioners wanting to refile them. As you may know, we did not just automatically refile items that had been on the 2020 town, annual town meeting. We, re, we asked the petitioners if they wanted them to be put on the docket. So uh, we would need to confirm that. So this is the whole, this is the universe. Thank you, Jenny. And then you had mentioned before that too, that we also have some potential zoning amendments coming from the transportation from Connect Arlington. Yes, but because both Connect Arlington is not going to be wrapped up until early next year in earnest. So um, that hit this year's town meeting? Not annual town meeting, but okay. my, my recommendation will be that we have a special town meeting at some later point next year and that it includes a number of zoning items. Because I, I think that the other things that are not reflected in this list are all of the housing items. But we had said that we were going to continue the housing dialogue. We're going to also work on the housing production plan. We're also going to work on an action plan for the newly established housing trust um, that is being put into place. And I think that the logical, to me, the logical course of action is to see that public process through as we discussed with the select board and then make recommendations on zoning after. I think there are, however, some zoning items related to housing that we've been discussing that deserve to also be refiled, but are likely to be refiled by citizen petitioners um, and not necessarily by the redevelopment board, but we can talk about that. Great, thank you. Um, any board members wish to uh, have comments? David. Uh, well, thanks. Thanks for the review, uh, Jenny. This is this is helpful. A um, couple of questions. One is, um, I'm I'm just thinking back. I, I think the department was able to do some community engagement activities around housing issues over the the course of the year, despite the pandemic. And I don't remember if I've ever seen like a, a compendium of that information and the responses that were collected to, because I, I don't feel like I have a good understanding of, of what, what the community expressed interest in or concerns about in that process. It was a very stunted process. It's, it started in February, Aaron. Yeah. And it ended in like May, June. I'll let Aaron uh, talk about it. 
it it went through june um there there is a memo that was provided um potentially to um i think we were planning on sharing it um earlier this fall um we can dig that up and reshare it um that sort of uh, laid out the range of um thoughts and concerns and suggestions from the community. Um, I think but, we talked about it actually when we, we didn't share that overview perhaps, but we talked about it uh, at the September joint meeting. Thank you, Jenny, that is, that's right. Um, sorry, a lot of, a lot of dates are in my a lot of meetings. brain, <laughs> a lot of meetings. Um, but yes, there, um, there was an overview provided at that um, and, uh, that uh, could be um, rediscussed at a future redevelopment board meeting. So we, we, yeah. we would need to do more outreach and we would need to reignite that process that we talked about back in September yeah. um, and devote staff time and resources and perhaps work in partnership with members of the community um, as well as the housing plan implementation committee on this that, that's the other thing is that some of these committees uh, have about, I think have the bandwidth to advance maybe one or two, two items, but they can't really do everything. Um, and so I believe that the housing plan implementation committee will be particularly useful as we're developing the next HPP and we want their, we want their input on that, but they also wanna work on the transfer uh, fee, um, which is basically a, a home rule petition that will be going before a town meeting in the spring. Um, so I don't, so I think we need to revisit the outreach component, David. I mean, I think what I would like to see is um, us get to the point where we feel like we have done a reasonable amount of, of that outreach and gotten uh, useful information from it. Um, and then factor that information into uh, whatever substantive zoning proposals we, we think are, are appropriate, and then turn back around and have more engagement around what we're, those proposals that we're thinking about. And I would ideally like to do that before we ever put anything on the warrant, um, just to, to be confident that we're, we're heading in in a direction that's strongly supported by, by the community. Um, I don't think, I'm not, I'm not so concerned about, um, you know, all those technical corrections that were, were on the list. Uh, that's not what I'm talking about, but, and, and we don't have at the moment any, any really substantive zoning changes um, that, that are contemplated for annual town meeting. Uh, I'm, uh, depending on I, I think depending on what we decide uh, to do with the uh, with the industrial district uh, proposals um, but, uh, you know I, I, I you know I know the pandemic really slowed us down in this process and I I feel like we're we're once again kind of feeling pressed for time now for annual town meeting um, to, to do the kind of outreach that I had hoped to do. Um, but it doesn't sound like we're, except with the possibility of the industrial district proposals, it doesn't sound like we're, we're moving forward that quickly with, with any other substantive proposals. Well, that, that's up to the board. Um, I mean, there is the accessory dwelling unit bylaw, and that's obviously there was a document posted mm -hmm. uh, and drafted, but it may or may not be something the board wishes to pursue. And I would guess that one of the people participating in this meeting as a, as a resident is Barbara Thornton, who is a town meeting member who will likely want to refile um, some version of her proposal as well. I felt pretty confident based on our discussion during that hearing that uh, that we did want to dig into that as a board and and perhaps um, move forward on it ourselves. And I, I was assuming we were going to discuss that a little later in the agenda. Yes, we um, have that later in the agenda. 
Yeah. Yeah. So, and so right now the, uh, all the things you're saying, David, do you, is there something in particular on this list of uh, what I thought I would do tonight, by the way, is we're not finalizing this yeah. tonight. I'm going to take your suggestions and then I'm glad mm -hmm. to sort of draft it up and I'll give you a document to vote on at your next meeting. Yeah. The same thing goes for the next, the conversation about rules. We can't yeah. adopt that tonight. It's just right. a conversation. So I guess the one specific thing that was on the list um, as being possible um, for, for annual town meeting, one of the third items um, from, from last year's annual meeting uh, was uh, the citizen article uh, about clarifying uh, allowable uses in, uh, for mixed use. And it seems likely that that's going to come back around. And I'm wondering if, if that is, is something that the board wants to proactively dig into and, and think about whether uh, there is any, any action we would recommend taking uh, so that this issue doesn't keep coming up. It is on that list of, I would, we would need to get in touch with the citizen petitioners to see if they want to refile. Um, it's on the other document. Well, right, but that wouldn't prevent us from from uh, deciding to to do something uh, proactively around that issue uh, if if we wanted to, right? That's up to the board. So I have that I have that noted. Um, what I what I think I'd like to do is to make sure that. In the time we have allotted, all of the board members have a chance to either respond to what's on this list or add, like you just did, other suggestions. Um, so, David, I have that one written down, um, and we can certainly come come back to it for discussion after everybody's had a chance to um, respond. Did you have okay. anything else that you wanted to? Add? Uh, nothing. Nothing specifically zoning related. Okay. Um, Kim, did you want to? Yeah. I think it was either last year or the year before, uh, we had talked about uh, revisiting uh, the master plan and saying that the master plan uh, was uh, adopted, uh, correct if I'm wrong, Jenny, what, five, six years ago? 2015, um, yep. So it, it is, uh, you know, usually every five years you go revisit it and see how things that needs to be changed or modified or has, you know, um, as things change that we have, we, we should relook at it. So uh, I would like to say, can we go re revisit that as a board and see how appropriate it is uh, or any changes needed or what's there is fine. Thanks, Ken. I have that one noted as well for, for discussion. Thank you. Uh, anything else that you wanna put on the table? No, I think um, Rachel, uh, Jenny said that the other stuff I, I had concerns about was covered. So I'm gonna um, not take up more time. Great, thanks so much. Uh, Katie. No, I think um, my colleagues and Jenny have sort of covered all of my questions. Um, yeah, thanks. Great, uh, Jean. Yeah, yeah, this is really helpful. I've got a few. A few things, um, <clears throat> excuse me. First, I wonder if there's any reason not to bring the corrections and the administrative changes to the next um, town meeting. They seem to be easy to do. They seem to be needed to do. And unless there's some reason not to take them to spring town meeting, I'd suggest that we do take them. So I'm interested whether Jenny feels there's a reason to hold up on taking oh, it. No, I, I didn't mean to make it seem like I did. No, I, I would say we would ref, we would file all those administrative amendments. Okay. And yeah. I was recommending that we add the three new items that I listed at the top of that list, which was the solar ready bylaw, the industrial zoning, and I'm recommending that, okay. and, and the marijuana uses. And then the, the items at the bottom of that list are citizen petitions. Right. I so I just don't know, that's all. But yes, I agree, they are, they should be filed. Yeah, and, and I'll send, I sent you um, an email so many months ago, you probably can't dig it up and I'll have to see if I can find it. I found another um, 
part in the um, bylaws that need to be corrected. There's a reference to an incorrect reference to a section. So I'll try to find that pretty soon. And I think hopefully we, we put that on the list, Aaron. I, it's something, it's just, we will make sure that it's on there, yeah, in the, on this new list. But I know that I forwarded that to, uh, okay. we have that. Yeah. All right, so um, second, so I'm wondering if there are any zoning changes that we can make to help some of the funding of the Affordable Housing Trust Fund. Because I know the big push and what we really need to do is to get the transfer tax. Um, but I'm thinking there are probably some things that can be done on the margins um, to um, add some fees that would go to the Affordable Housing Trust Fund. That's a whole bigger conversation than we can have tonight. And maybe, you know, if you're interested, I'll send you an email with some of my thoughts about some easy potential things to do for those. But um, while we're waiting to see whether, you know, the transfer tax happens either through special legislation or general legislation, I think we should look and see if there are some changes we can make to the zoning bylaw and start putting some money into the Affordable Housing Trust Fund. So that's one thing. Um, second is, there was an interesting article, I think it was today or yesterday's Boston Globe, about the city of Boston about to adopt changes to their zoning bylaws to help affirmatively further fair housing. That, that really important regulation the Trump administration got rid of, that I'm guessing the Biden administration will put back in place. And I thought it would be really interesting to take a look at what they're proposing to do or what they're about to do and see if there are some things from that that we can incorporate um, into our bylaws. And I haven't looked at what they've proposed to do because I just read the Globe article, but I think that would be a good thing to look at either for spring or for a special town meeting sometime next year. So I add that to our list. Um, I think we need to take, and I think we need to take another look at if there are things we can do with the bylaws to to encourage more both affordable housing and workforce income housing to get built. And I know some of this is part of the larger discussion about you know what to do about housing in the town, but there may be some things we can do with the bylaws that I don't think we're gonna get there by the deadline for spring town meeting, but I think it would be helpful to have them on our list so we can think about them for a special town meeting um, in the fall. Um, the other thing I had is the ADUs, which are a little later on, so I'll save that part of the discussion till we get to the ADUs. Oh, and the, the other thing I should mention is in addition to the two net zero things that um, you mentioned, Jenny, I'm just wondering if we need to add a more um, general clause to the EDR having to do with environment and climate, because the one is not really one that deals directly. Environment is more about built environment, but I thought it would be helpful to maybe have a general one that's about uh, climate and environment to give us more of an ability to look at that when we're looking at a permit application. Great, thank you, Jean. Um, I just had, um, I appreciate everything that people have put on the table and we'll go back and take these one by one. Um, but I just wanted to add two more um, to, to this list. Um, the first is, seeing what I think is the great work that was done um, by the department and um, the, the consultant to create the residential design guidelines and knowing some of the challenges that we've had trying to communicate um, the board's preferences and, and work with a lot of the commercial applicants um, 
starting the process at some point this year of looking at creating a set of commercial or business design guidelines would um, be something that I'd, I'd like to put on the table for discussion. Um, and then the other thing that I'd like to put on the table for discussion specific to, I think, um, building on Ken's earlier question about how we can work to um, assist businesses and spur more commercial development within town um, is taking a commercial district such as the Arlington Heights business district and really looking at the at the zoning there and the challenges that the zoning map currently presents to commercial development um, and studying that and perhaps making some um, making some recommendations for um, modifications to the to the zoning map um, to assist businesses in, in their ability to develop the, the properties um, in our in our commercial districts. Uh, so I wanted to put those two on the on the table. So um, I know we have ADUs a little bit um, later in our agenda, um, but the uh, first one that I have on my list is to discuss um, the uh, David's, what David put on the table about clarification about um, mixed use and whether that's something that this board would like to take on or um, do we want to wait to see whether the citizen petition uh, is being moved forward. So is there anyone that wants to weigh in on that? I'll, I'll say, I think the bylaw is very clear now. And um, I don't, you know, I think the only reason we would wanna change is if we want to narrow the opportunity for mixed use. And I don't see the necessity to do that. I, I would guess very strongly that the, you know, that the citizen petition is coming back um, and we'll probably get to address it that way, but interested in what other people have to think about it. I, I'm not sure I feel that the, the bylaw is entirely clear. Um, particularly, I, I think some of the, in, in some cases, there are references in the text to what's allowed in mixed use. And in some cases, it's, it's the tables. And it's a little, I, I find it a little bit ambiguous in, in some cases, depending on what section you're looking at, as to what, what controls. And I'd like to go through and uh, identify areas where there is ambiguity and, and just eliminate it. <laughs> and you had something to add? I would, <clears throat> I would agree with Jean. I think it's what's there is I feel comfortable with. And I think it's, um, it's pretty straightforward. So could I make a suggestion then, just knowing that we have a couple others to get to as well. Um, David, if there's something that you had wanted to take a, a look at, perhaps if you wanted to um, take a look at any modifications you might suggest, and then we could defer this to a future meeting um, when we have the, while the warrant period is still open so that we can decide whether that's something that we'd like to take on as a board. Do, do the board members feel that that would be an appropriate way to move forward. Any other comments on that proposal? Jenny? Well, I just want to remind the board that we did have a hearing about this and discussion about it in March, correct, Aaron? Somebody else? Anybody? Um, yeah. And there was not there was not consensus from the board in support of that proposal at all at the time. Now, I recognize that we've experienced some new applications utilizing the mixed use portion of the bylaw and that might be might be influencing your uh, opinion about it but I will say that the majority of the board did not support that proposal when we had the hearing about it in March great thanks for the clarification Jenny okay um, I just I just wanted to be clear I'm I'm not hoping that we 
adopt that citizen proposal as as our own. I'm I'm just proposing that we perhaps take a closer look at the issue to see if there is any action we want to take, uh, uh, which would not necessarily be in agreement with the citizen proposal. Thank you, David. And, and again, I think if, if you wanted to bring more, Jenny. I was just gonna say, I, I would not suggest that course of action at this time, again, where the mixed use bylaw is relatively new and we're still experiencing having projects come before the board. We're gaining experience with it. We're coming up with new ideas about what we think should be mixed use. Let's give the bylaw more time before we go picking at things that we think need to be adjusted or corrected. That would be my suggestion to the board. I know that people in the community might not even agree with the statement that I just made. Um, and maybe some of you don't agree, but I really highly suggest you take more time with it and, and, and better understand it. But I think that the way it's been utilized and applied does not have anything to do with, um, th this correction wouldn't change the things that you might be thinking it will change. Um, or that the, even the citizen petitioner believes might change as a result of it. So I would, I, I'm, I'm discouraging it because I think that we're experiencing, the majority of applications we have are from the mixed use zoning bylaw. <laughs> um, so I would, I would suggest that we keep it in place and get more experience with it and then, and then have a discussion about what we think needs improvement and could change and kind of go from there. I agree. I, I would agree too. Jean, I see you nodding your head. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree. I mean, I think if David were to say, here's something that is really perplexing that's in the bylaw, that it would be something I would take a serious look at. But I personally haven't found that, but you know, David may have found it. I'll, I'll take a closer look, and, but I, you know, I, uh, I'll, I'll defer to the rest of the board on the priority you want to assign this. Uh, and if I, if I think there is something more critical, I'll, I'll bring it forward. Great, thank you, David. Um, see, the next item we had here was uh, looking again at the, the master plan. And Jenny, perhaps I can um, pose this to, to you in terms of um, is there an intent or a date when, when that does come up for review? I mean, it's a, it's a master plan without, I don't, doesn't exactly have a number of years on it ever, right? It talks about like short-term, near-term, mid-term, long-term, <laughs> but it's not exactly clear what those terms were. It, it does, um, There's like the, yeah. <laughs> it, it does provide like a range of years, um, I believe with the outer horizon being 10 years. 10 years. So we put into this year's uh, goals that we would do what you're talking about, um, Ken. I, I don't know that we will be able, we can maybe attempt to review the work of the Master Plan Implementation Committee. They haven't met much this year at all, um, but we can also think about the working groups that we have in place. And this might speak to the point that you made earlier about like a group thinking about economic development or the commercial corridors. Maybe we need a working group on that and not we don't, we don't have a Millbrook study group anymore. So um, probably it is time to revisit that. Uh, but develop, and then maybe developing a process that's possible. I, I'm not sure what the exact timeline would be though. So I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to express this level of reluctance. I, I think we can do some portion of it. I definitely agree it needs to happen. I don't know how much is achievable next year with a public process. The key, the key part to any of that related to the master plan would be a public process. And based upon the number of other public processes we'll be engaged in next year, I don't know that I can add one about in the master, re reworking the master plan, but I absolutely agree we should look at how are we doing, does this, you know, do, do elements of it needs to, need to, uh, to be amended? And then do we need to look at some new study or working groups, um, which was something that I think you were alluding to earlier. And I, I if it's okay, Rachel, Erin actually works with the Master Plan Implementation Committee, so I'd just be interested in her insight on this one. 
Uh, sure. Thanks, Rachel. Um, I think that relative to updating the master plan, it would be, um, I, I would tend to agree with Jenny that I think that there's certain sections that could take a deeper look. And if we don't necessarily follow the exact prescribed recommendation or action in the master plan, I think that's okay. But to retool the document um, halfway through its term um, or its you know general term of if we select 10 years, it's, um, it, it might be more useful in another year or so to think about updating the document on as a whole um, with uh, 2025, you know, creeping up relatively quickly. Um, so I, uh, in summary, I think I would suggest that, um, you know, we can look at certain pieces of it assign it to a new working group or an existing working group or, or bring back old working groups, um, focus on those pieces and then consider, you know, starting a new process relative to it. Thank you. I'm fine with that. It's just that a few years ago, uh, we talked about that stuff. We talked about the same thing and the same uh, the discussion was saying, yes, we don't want, we're not ready for it. We should wait and, and uh, address this in a year or so, or, I mean, I don't keep on want to kick it, kicking the can down the road. Uh, I think we should just say, look, you know, it is, a, it is a lot, but we should start at least looking at it. I don't want to just say, okay, let's kick it, kick the can down the road. We'll, we'll, we'll pay attention to it later. It's something that we're always referring to. And if, uh, if, if the direction is a little different, then let's, let's, let's talk about it. Uh, Rachel may, and Jenny, may I quickly respond as well? Yes, please. That? Um, so I think um, that's, that's a valid point. I don't want to kick the can down the road. Um, we have a master plan implementation committee. Um, there, uh, it potentially could use some reinvigoration of new members. Um, and perhaps that committee can start taking on that discussion about where we need to look to see, um, you know, focus on certain aspects, but also look to see where specific course changes might be necessary um, as, a, as a response to Ken's comment. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron. I think that that definitely works. Let's kick that over to the Aaron and the Master Plan Implementation Committee um, for next steps. I, okay. I just had one quick sure. point on that. I'd also be interested in perhaps um, finding a way to get an understanding of whether um, there's a disconnect between the goals and objectives as stated in the master plan and um, the public's understanding uh, of, um, you know, particularly um, projects that that have happened subsequent to that in support of the master plan um, because sometimes we hear from the public that that uh, they feel like projects are inconsistent with the master plan and then we have to engage in a back and forth with them about it and I'm, I'm wondering um, if as part of that public process we can not just look at what might need to be changed but um, gauge what what is the public's understanding of uh, how the implementation has worked so far. Thank you, David. We can certainly add that to the the goals of that study. Um, that that looking... sounds like a that sounds like a good maybe town wide survey set of questions for next year though because we're already working on them for this coming year, so it'd be twenty twenty two. So um, I, I hear what you're saying, David. Thanks, Jenny. So Jean, I know that our fourth agenda item um, is around zoning amendments and housing. So if it's okay with you, I'll defer your items that you were looking to add to the goals for discussion in that agenda item, if that works for you. Right. Great. Um, you, you did ask if we could look at 
adding a general clause about um, environment and the climate to the um, environmental design review guidelines. Um, I think we can add that as a as something we can take a take a look at. Um, I was going to suggest that so that we have a an item here uh, on the screen review and amend environmental design review criteria that was actually supposed to be a broader set of activities that we were going to engage in that I would still like to engage in, not just about um, what Jean was talking about. But I would say that what you're talking about, Jean, is actually stuff that we think will be, uh, needs to be amended as part of the stormwater bylaw, uh, which is going to go to Springtown meeting 2021. So uh, I, I actually don't have an answer to that. Do you, Erin, by any chance? Did you talk to Emily? Uh, no, I, I haven't had a chance to talk to Emily um, since since we talked half hour. an hour and a half ago. Um, the but I I think that that comment, Jean's comment and request, um, and then the need to potentially update that stormwater criteria relative to um, a new stormwater bylaw to be in compliance with the NIPDES permit, um, and then also potentially looking at the all of the criteria as a whole is a good project to take on. Um, and I, I would want to look at them all as, as a suite of criteria rather than pick and choose one over the other because um, you know I, they were added to over time, not significantly, but a couple were added. Um, so I think we need to look at how they all interact together um, with an eye towards updating them to be consistent with plans and policies and, and just current thinking around around these, these items? You know, I, I was sort of thinking of something very general, as I said, which was more like, you know, um, an EDR criteria on environment and climate in, in which we look at whether the applicant's proposal is consistent with town plans and policies and guidelines and other criteria having to do with environment and climate. So it doesn't directly say you must use this for stormwater, but it allows us to go where I don't think we've gone up to this point in looking at a lot of the projects. And you know, as the town might change its policies or plans, we would not have to go back each time and change the EDR criterion to be able to do that. That's what I was thinking of. I guess I can quickly respond. Um, Eric, please, yeah. Um, I, I think that that's a good idea as well. Um, I do, I think we'll have to make some specific changes to be in compliance with the NIFTES permit though. Um, that will be very specific, um, right. Right. but, but um, adding something in about compliance, which is something that Jenny and I try and weave into our staff reports um, and our reviews of zoning amendments and such, but perhaps that is, that is something that would be helpful um, so that it's explicit. Thank you, Erin. And I apologize, my dog is losing his mind in the background behind me right now. Um, so the last two items were um, about looking at the any zoning impediments to business development in the Arlington Heights business district. Um, Jenny, I see you took yourself off mute. <laughs> Oh yeah, I've just been off mute, I think. Um, no, I wasn't, nothing in particular. Yes, I agree with that. And Erin and I spoke about it earlier. And while I think originally we thought maybe we would have something we could talk about for spring town meeting, I think we would prefer to have more time with that. And also with the neighborhood, the, the implementation committee to talk about it as well as some property owners uh, before we endeavored to change the zoning districts. One of the recommendations, if you, some of you might recall from that report is to um, basically consolidate the four business districts into one district. Um, we're also talking about the industrial zoning district, which is abutting that. And I am then in that report, there's a recommendation for an overlay district, a PUD uh, sort of new type of district just for a couple of industrial parcels in that area. I think we want to just take a look at what, have a better 
proposal um, that we think is worth uh, really pursuing and also understanding the dimensional and density requirements for this new proposed zoning district. And we're, we're not there yet, but we agree that it should definitely be per, uh, pursued. It's very relevant. Great, thank you. Ken? Is that a committee or uh, what is, how's that, how are you guys doing, how are you guys addressing that? I wouldn't mind getting more involved in that. Oh, Rachel is, uh, Rachel has been participating in these uh, the whole time, right? <laughs> the Arlington right. Heights Neighborhood right. Action Plan right. uh, Implementation Committee. <laughs> right, but Ken, if, if you're interested in becoming yeah. more involved, it would be great to have your voice um, as part of that too. Well, if you're involved in, and you feel like that's good enough, I'm not gonna, I don't wanna uh, step on your shoes or, or crowd you, you know, I mean. I will say we have not gotten into any anything related to zoning y yet. It's really been more about um, grassroots and placemaking. Um, so this this is something that would need to be delved into in the coming months. So again, if it's something you're interested in, um, I'm sure that the committee could value could would value from your input as well. Yes, I am. Okay, great. Well, um, we'll make sure to include you on uh, the Allie Carter from our department uh, lets people know when those meetings are happening. Thank you. Great. You're welcome. And then um, the last item we had on on here was um, one that I put forth, which was about the commercial design guidelines and whether or not that was something that, again, I know there's a lot a lot currently on, on um, the department's plate right now, but it's something that I think we as a board could benefit from in the future. I think for that one, what I would, uh, well, so we, we had like funding to do the commercial industrial design standards, which is what we have right now. Um, and obviously to do the des residential design guidelines, that was a town meeting appropriation as well. Um, I don't, I think while we have some st staff capacity in a limited sense to do some of this work, um, we can't even do the, mo the 3D model that had been requested. We, we will need to hire somebody to support that project. So I guess what I would suge suggest, um, for better or worse, is that we would have to make a special appropriation of funds to do that sort of project. I think it, it's too, there is an existing base of something to work with. So maybe it's not too much uh, money, but I think what you're really looking for is something much more detailed and that would require an architect to sure. provide that kind of you know depth and guidance, um, which is why we have such a high quality document for the residential design guidelines. Right, agreed. Rachel? Can I just say, yeah, I mean, I agree with you. It would be ideal to end up with um, a document similar to the residential design guidelines documents for commercial industrial spaces. Um, but I also recognize the um, impediments to getting it done soon that Jenny just mentioned. Maybe an interim step is we do have a set of a guidance now. And I don't think we've ever really pulled it out when we've looked at any um, proposals and grounded our suggestions in any way related to those. So maybe an interim step that we can do at some point is take a look at them and see if we can make better use of them than we've done up to this point. I think there's precedent for, for taking that approach because for instance, on the issue of bike parking, I, I think the board um, pushed uh, uh, proponents to do more on bike parking um, based on, um, you know, just general best practices before we had fully codified uh, new, guy, uh, new, new bike parking bylaws in the town or created uh, the town's bike parking guide. Um, you know, so I, I think we could, we could take some preliminary action uh, without a full-fledged guide available to us. 
I, I will say that I've looked through them recently and they're thin. Yes. So um, I don't know that they're, they're, they're definitely not what we're discussing needing as a, as a board, but I, I think your suggestion is good that everybody familiarize themselves with what we do currently have in place. And that way, at least we'll know better what we're, the delta as to what we're looking for um, when we define that through a town meeting appropriation, if that's the best way to go. Okay, anything else before we move to, I know we're a little behind the time, um, our next agenda item, which was a uh, proposed amendment to the ARB rules and regulations, rule 10. Okay, Jenny, do you wanna? Well, what I was gonna say is for the for the goals, what I'm gonna do is I'll, I'll work with Rachel and Aaron to pull together an updated document. Um, and then I'll, we'll talk, we'll put it on the meeting of the 21st for a vote. Great. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Um, let me grab that, sorry. Hey, Jenny, can I ask one thing? Yeah. When, when we get the agenda and we have, and it has attached to it all the, uh, the proponents proposals, it, sometimes I get a little, when I'm going back and forth on what's the most current and what's not uh, current anymore, is there a way of um, putting a, um, a watermark on the ones that, that are uh, outdated in, as part of our package? in the Novus agenda. Yeah. Um, just the drawings. No, I don't need the, the text oh, or anything the, else like that. In the drawings? Yeah, just like a, like a watermark saying this was this is superseded. Uh, like, we'll figure out a way to do it. I, I'm sure there's a way. I don't, I don't know. Uh, we've tried to, <laughs> in the, I know you're not all doing it this way, but we've in the uh, interactive version of the agenda, not the PDF version, okay. we put the We've been putting new on documents, so it's clear what is new. But I think that obviously doesn't carry into the PDF. So uh, Aaron and I can talk about how to make it clear and work with Mary who posts the documents. Thanks. As I, I compare both what was proposed before and what's new to see what the changes are and sometimes it gets a little confusing. I know what you're talking about, totally. Okay. Also, sometimes those plans don't have a date, a current date on them. They'll have yes. a, an that's older a, date, but don't show that it was a newer plan set. That's right. So yeah, that's I, correct. I do ask for that. <laughs> I don't always get it. Thank it you. It would be helpful if you can add the word new to the PDFs. I don't see why that wouldn't be possible to do when you're putting together the PDF. Oh, no, no. I mean, like the PDF is like the downloaded version of the entire meeting packet. So it's not going to tell you which document in there is new. It's going to give you everything. That was no, but once you got the PDF, couldn't you just go in it and add new to the documents that are new? Uh, it, we'll figure out a way to make it work. I'm not sure it's that. Um, a, it's Novus Agenda is a weird system okay. that we are using behind the scenes, <laughs> um, and I will I will talk with Aaron and Mary about what what we can do to improve the document flow and uh, so it's clear what's new. Um, so speaking of Novifus agenda, um, <laughs> rule 10 is all about that really. <laughs> so uh, essentially what I am requesting is, uh, I'm, I'm requesting to uh, essentially codify what I'm already doing, what we do in practice, which is we post documents basically uh, in accordance with open meeting law and, <laughs> and public meeting law. We've been doing it this way for a long time. When we first developed this, these rules and regulations, I think we were ambitiously hoping that we could move everything up earlier in the process. We were also, uh, to some extent, modeling ourselves after what the select board does for how they build an agenda. The select board has a completely different agenda than we do, and one that does not include working with applicants in large amounts of plans um, that are then reviewed. So I'm asking for these amendments really to provide the staff with the time they need to review things before they're ready to be posted um, and to post things all at once. That's, that's the real driver behind asking for this and also to reflect the actual practice 
which is when we actually post things rather than what it says in terms of when we post things, which I, I can try to accomplish, but I think it would be in piecemeal. And I don't think that that's actually fair to the public or to the board. So that, that's, the, uh, that's the spirit behind this um, proposed amendment. And just one more thing before you say, um, before you ask a question, which is that this is a conversation. It's not like a definitive. If you don't want to amend the rules, you don't have to. But if you do decide to amend them, what I would suggest is you recommend some changes and then we would post the document. It will have a public comment period and a hearing because they're rules and regulations. Um, and so there, there is still a comment period. So people can, depending upon how we feel about this, people can also make some statements about how they don't agree with it or they support it, so. Thank you, Jenny. I, I just have one question then I'll turn it over to my colleagues for any questions as well. When you say 48 hours um, prior to the meeting date, is that 48 business hours um, or is that literal time 48 hours beforehand? No, it's um, an Aaron. You can, you can talk about it. You looked like you wanted to chime in. Sure. Um, forty-eight hours, as defined by the open meeting law, is forty-eight business hours. So weekends and holidays do not count, which is um, why we post our agendas on Thursday for Monday meetings. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, any member of the board have any questions or comments? I'm supportive of this. Oh, thank you, Ken. Yeah, I, I mean, for me, the thing that was most concerning was that it doesn't get the agenda and, and materials to us later than we do now, because right now it's posted sometime on Thursday for the Monday meeting. And that's sometime, I mean, sometimes that's fine, but sometimes there's 500 pages to go through, you know? So, um, my, my biggest concern was this would be compressing it and we wouldn't be getting it Thursday, but we'd be getting it closer to the Monday meeting date. So I'm thinking that rather than the at least 48 hours, why not just put, you know, um, three business days or two business days, whatever it is, prior to the meeting date. So it's, it's better understandable than 48 hours. And if it's still Thursday, that's fine. You know, it's tight, but we've lived with it for a long time. But I would just make it a little easier to understand by saying whether whatever it is, two or three business days prior to the meeting. I actually just noticed that number five and number six say something different. One of them actually clarifies that it's in compliance with open meeting law and the other one doesn't. Um, I think it's okay to actually say in compliance with open meeting law. Every other committee and board in town posts things in the same exact manner. Um, so, but I, I hear what you're saying because 48 hours would be confusing if you think it's Saturday. <laughs> David, you look like you were gonna ask something. Well, yeah, I mean, 48 hours is completely confusing me. <laughs> And, and I That's think what we do right now, but what, I understand why what, it's confusing. Yeah, one of our goals, one of our goals should obviously be to uh, eliminate confusion. Um, the other thing is I, I'm not exactly sure, you know, we have everything in the chart and with the exception of the 48 hour thing, it seems pretty clear, but then there's this paragraph below the chart that says members of the public can add things basically up to the last minute. And I wasn't, wasn't clear how that kind of interacts with the other, all the other deadlines. Or They're if it's basically something... it's outside of the deadlines. Um, it's what we're doing. Again, it's what we're doing right now. If you look at our agendas, we allow people to email us up to this evening, essentially, or 4 p.m. before mm -hmm. the meeting. And if they have visual materials, which was something we agreed upon, I think, this summer, that yeah. they would submit it by the Friday so that we had a little more time. And, and this is all, I don't post things <laughs> by the way, I get the email and then I forward it to somebody else <laughs> who posts it. Yeah. So we do our very best to, uh, to get the information posted but it doesn't always get there exactly on this timeline. But I think yeah. it's only fair to point out that we do allow 
comments to be received for our meetings and um, that that's an acceptable timeline. It's, it's after somebody has, is reacting to the material, obviously, or it's during a continued hearing. So somebody has something additional to uh, provide, you know? No, I, I agree this is important to um, allow this. And, but I think that pushing it so close to the meeting is, is responsive to I, the point that Jean raised, which is uh, often as, as we don't, we have enough time to review the materials, neither does the public. And uh, we want to get feedback from the public. And, and this, the problem with this, I think from our perspective with allowing public comments to be submitted and included um, up to that close to the meeting is it impedes our ability to review that material prior to the meeting, um, you know, which sometimes is very relevant. So, you know, I, I, mean, I yeah. don't, can we, if we're, if we're thinking about maybe pushing things well, pulling things back even further to give us more time, then maybe we can pull this back a little bit um, uh, to give us time to review anything that's submitted by the public in response to what's been posted. I, I agree with you in spirit completely. And that's how these rules were already written, was to give everybody more time. And, but in practice, it's not working that way and it's hard to do. And people are going to always provide more comments, no matter what we do in terms of changing this. In fact, since these are our existing rules, people are people. People don't abide by them. <laughs> by the way, other people, um, including the people who provide us with emails at 5 p.m., um, which happens on a regular basis. So I, you know, I hear what you're saying completely. Um, I think the biggest thing to focus on is. Um, is how is the quality of the materials or the, that are posted, the making sure it's very clear what you need to review for that evening um, so that you feel more prepared. In terms of giving you more time, I, I'm, I'm struggling with that. I currently don't know how much more time we can provide based upon the time between meetings sometimes. Um, you know, the reality is for example, we just had a hearing on Monday night. The applicant has to come back by Monday one week later to give us updated materials, which is actually quite a lot, a, a quite a limited amount of time. And then we're not going to post them right away. We need to review the materials to provide, you know, a, to make sure they, they're actually responsive um, before we actually post them. And then we would post them with an agenda that will have other items on it. So I, I, the one, one thing I can look into, I guess, um, and Aaron, I don't know if, if you know the answer to this, but I think that there's a back end to Nova's agenda that before it goes live, there might be a way for the board to view items before they are active. I, I don't know how to say it, but like there might be a way that we can post some documents. Um, I just, I don't know enough about Nova's to confirm this possibility. It's, it's still contingent on our staff yeah, the staff the yep. and, yeah. and having the materials from the applicants, to be quite frank. So I know we still have one more agenda item. Um, and um, I think we have given some feedback on some, you know, a, a few minor clarifications to, um, to this proposed codification of really how how we're we're currently um, conducting business are there are there any new points or um, questions that we want to make sure that Aaron and Jenny are aware of prior to bringing this to a future meeting for further discussion and um, voting to potentially put this uh, put this uh, on the books one David you have one, one more thing um, so I'm hesitant to bring this up because I, I think it might involve more work by either the, the planning department or inspectional services. Um, but um, I would love, um, especially on, on the bigger projects, to 
um, have in my hand um, before the hearing uh, kind of a, a comprehensive zoning analysis of the project. Um, because right now, um, um, what often happens is sometimes we identify zoning issues that, that get brought up, um, we the board members. Um, someti sometimes, fairly often, it's members of the public who raise zoning issues, uh, some of which they're correct about and, and some of which they're not, but uh, oftentimes we were not uh, otherwise aware of not having gone through the, the full analysis ourselves. So I'm wondering, is is that something the other board members are interested in? And is it possible to provide us with more information? I mean, I agree with David, that would be ideal. I've always thought it was um, not the best process where each of us sit around in the three or four days between when we've gotten in the meeting and at least what I do is try to figure out, you know, where does this comply with zoning? Where does it? I'm flipping through the bylaw on a fairly regular basis. And as David said, I think um, often we come up with things, but sometimes we don't. And sometimes uh, the public identifies things correctly and sometimes incorrectly. And when they identify something at the meeting incorrectly, then I'm trying to flip through the zoning bylaw at the same time the meeting's going on, trying to figure it out. And I think there's a lot of repetition in the work that each of us on the board does that could be eliminated if there was a zoning analysis that went with the proposals. So the board does, the, the staff does some of that. Clearly in um, the, the memo that uh, Jenny writes to the board, some of that's in it, but not all of it. Well, I, that doesn't feel like an amendment to our rules and regulations, by the way, David. I mean, that's just something we can we can find a way. And Aaron, Aaron and I work together on the memos, um, to be clear. But um, we can we can find a way to uh, provide an, a, a more in depth uh, zoning assessment. I, I but I, I, I cannot that. speak to the the level of uh, interaction or um, what we can do with inspectional services directly. Um, they typically don't review things like at this stage, they might review some component of it, but it is not, um, I, I, I don't think that that would be incorporated into our review. I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend it be in fact, um, but I can work with Aaron on finding a way to um, improve our, you know, sort of the, uh, really it's the first question in the, uh, in the EDR, uh, which is the, is the use allowed. Um, and we can we can probably go a little bit deeper on that one. We'll, I mean, we'll find brought... we'll, we'll find a way to to be responsive. I want to be respectful of the time. I do hear I hear what you're saying. I don't know that it belongs in the my my recommendation is that it doesn't belong in the rules. I was just reading through them myself. Yeah. I only brought it up because it creates a potential timing issue, and we were just discussing the whole timing of the materials. Oh yeah, I I think that we can I I. I understand what you're saying. Um, and I also have heard, we have certainly heard this before. Um, so I will, including uh, more specific request, requests about uh, zoning reviews. Um, but Aaron and I will figure out a way to try to be responsive and we can um, perhaps continue this on the 21st because we have a continued hearing anyway. And, we, and then we have actually a new hearing. We have a lot on that. That's fair, David, does that address your concern? Great. Okay, um, anything else before we move on to uh, item number four? Okay, uh, so we'll discuss this topic again, Jenny, on the 21st. Yeah, I think I'll just put on the agenda of the 21st, I'll put an item for the for you to, I'll just put the, the new rule Great. Um, and you can decide if you want to vote on it or not. And then if you do, then we'll put it out for public comment and it'll come to a January meeting. I don't know which one, I'd have to look at the agendas. Um, and then on the other item, I'll also put your goals on there and you can you can review the draft, the final draft and decide whether or not you wanna vote on them that night. Does Great. that make sense? 
that works for me. Any um, objections to that plan? Okay, great. Uh, so the last item on our agenda, and I apologize that we only have five minutes <laughs> left for this. I know we have a hard stop at 6.30 for several people, um, is a discussion about outreach strategy and next steps for zoning amendments in the housing discussion. So perhaps this can be part one of the discussion and we can continue it at a future meeting. Well, I also think we started this when we were talking about the zoning amendments as part of item one. So maybe because we have, um, there's members of the of the public who are participating who I believe wanna talk about this with us. Um, it might be a better use of the limited amount of time just to have the conversation with them would be my proposal. Um, but that's what I would suggest. Great, any, any um, questions, Jean? I'm, I'm just, I don't know what to do with the ADUs because we've got one more meeting and then I think the, the warrant articles are due before our next meeting after that. So no. We have some the, more time. Okay. Warrant articles are due uh, the last Friday in January. Okay, so um, we have some more time. So we have time. time. We can we can okay. revisit that one. I, okay. I'm sorry for stuffing it in there and I, I've apologized already to the petitioner of her own ADU article um, about that. So um, I would I would very much like to hear from the people who are also participating in this from the public. Great. Uh, any anything else before I open it up for public comment? Great. Um, so, any member of the public who has joined us today wishing to speak, um, please use the raise hand feature, uh, which is through the participants button. I'll just remind you that when I call on you, please use your name, identify yourself by your name and address, and uh, I will afford you three minutes to speak. We'll start with Barbara Thornton. Great, thank you very much. First of all, I want to say- uh, I'm sorry, Barbara, could you just- uh, Barbara Thornton, Precinct 16, 223 Park Ave, Arlington. Thank you. Um, sorry, I, I got my last Zoom meeting background here. Um, I looked at the agenda quickly and I am, a, I am concerned about your intentions regarding ADU and, and David, Watson, just hearing your comments at the beginning and not having a, had an opportunity to talk with you, although I did reach out, um, and I, it sounds like you have in mind that it would be a good idea for the ADU to set up a competing uh, article uh, in the ADU space for the ARB to set that up. And I, I don't think that's really your intention but the second concern that I have is that I would like, I, there are three points. The second concern is I would like you to respect the fact that the community is out there talking about ADUs in great depth in a number of different venues. And for you to say that you need as the ARB to set up a process where you can validate by, cause it only comes to you what the community thinks is really not fair. So I would invite you to, you know, keep your ear to the ground, find out where these discussions are happening and, and what people are saying. The third is I wrote to the, I think a lot of confusion happened around the, this process, at least for me. And I strongly urge you to consider the, the process that I outlined for you in writing after the ARB hearing and, and I was hoping that I would hear you discuss that tonight. So, you know, an, an hour and a half into the meeting and I, I, I don't think I missed it. Um, I think it's really important if you are going to be, have a clear working relationship with all of the citizens that want to put some ground, some, some legwork into legislation and zoning and things like that. They have to know that they have a working relationship that, that what the rules of the game are, what the deadlines are, what the timing is, are you gonna get back to us or only, or are you gonna wait until you can tell us publicly at the hearing that, that you haven't heard about this before and it's not valid. So gotta clear that up. So that's, that's, that's three things. Please don't complete, don't be clear if you intend to compete with me on an ADU proposal because I will be submitting one. Um, two, 
keep your ear to the ground so that you hear what people are saying about this, because a lot of people are talking about ADUs in a very favorable way. And three, consider a written process that you understand and that the community can understand to go forward. That's all. Thank you very much, Rachel, for giving me the time. Absolutely. And Jenny for, for talking with me the other day. Thank you. Uh, do we have anyone else wishing to speak? Oh, sorry, Jenny. No, I just want to respond to Barbara's comment about not looking at the recommended approach that she had emailed uh, previously. I would like to say that since we didn't really, we haven't really talked about the exact zoning amendments yet, and we will be doing that at a future meeting, that that would be the appropriate time to pick that up. I'm sorry I didn't mention that earlier in point one, <laughs> but um, I had them ready to go. But because we were, I didn't feel that we were really, we're not in that space yet of talking about what we actually will be filing for annual town meeting. And I think that that would come as part of that discussion, um, can, including your recommendations as part I of just, that conversation. Yeah. Can I just say, I know your time is very limited to be together and to talk openly. I am prepared to talk to any of you separately and individually about the intent behind those, uh, that memo. Thank you, Barbara. I, I appreciate your willingness to, to engage. It's um, very helpful. Thank you so much. Uh, do we have any other members of the, of the public who wish to, to speak this evening? Uh, Alex. Hi there. Uh, quickly, I'd like to see... Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Speaking... Alex Bagnell, Wyman Street. Precinct Thank Center. you. Um, quickly, I'd like to see uh, an outreach that maybe reached out across a couple of different areas and involved a more historical context for the housing discussion. So that was not necessarily focused on a specific warrant article or a specific policy piece, but educated the town more broadly on the history. I think there is a desperate need for that. And I'm deeply jealous of Newton's bringing of Richard Rothstein in to talk to them and having the library support that and having a number of groups get behind that. Uh, so I will also be advancing this at the Envision meeting later um, and uh, could see gathering a number of constituencies to try and do this. And probably talking to Katie about talking. Great, uh, Jenny? Uh, if it's okay to re just respond, I just feel the need to. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, it's great. I appreciate it. I don't. I. I, more I, want this, meeting. I want this to be very much a conversation together, and to have it also help to do the work for the housing production plan, which I think will involve public outreach and input. Um, and then also, I just want to make note of the fact that we are going to be doing some sort of zoning 101 type sessions and even introductory sessions about town bylaws and things of that nature. Uh, the town council has talked about doing this and we will find a way to take it up either with Arlington community education or just through the town. Um, but I wanted to also mention that the, uh, the library had been doing a democracy after dark, I think is what it was called. And we, we'd be happy to work with you on what you're talking about to have that kind of uh, an, another housing forum. I agree that we, we had a really good housing conversation this summer through the community conversations, which included Katie. Um, and I think we should do more of that. And I think it's very important as part of the conversation. So I just want to support your point. Thank you. Thank you. Any other members of the board um, wish to respond to either one of those, those comments, Jean? Just quickly, I to say I agree with Barbara. We do need a process, and I think she put forth a good template for us to look at, so that we have a longer time frame and a really ability to engage with members of the public who put in warrant articles having to do with zoning. So I would encourage us to strongly consider her proposal or take it as as sort of our starting point to put something similar together. Great, thank you, Jean. Katie? Um, just really quickly, my 
kids are going nuts in the background. So my, my hard stop is rapidly approaching. Um, but I just want to say that I really strongly support what both Alex and Barbara are saying about really thinking broadly about what community conversation looks like. Um, this probably doesn't surprise anyone familiar with my background, but I have really strong views about community engagement and how it's traditional, the, the way we traditionally do it is fundamentally broken and privileges um, a very specific subset of the population. And I wanna hear from the general public in Arlington. And I'm really excited what Jenny's talking about with surveys. Um, I'm excited about some of the more creative ways of going out and actually talking to existing community forums and not just having sort of formal either Zooms or you know hearings where we ask people to come to us. Like I think the onus to some extent is on us to go out into the community and learn these views um, and, and participate in these broader conversations about housing. So I think we're gonna get a much more representative subset of the views about housing when we do that. So um, anyway, I, I greatly appreciate um, you guys attending the meeting and talking with us about how to do a high quality representative public process because I think we need that. Great, thank you, Katie. And any other uh comments from the from the board or from um, Jenny or Aaron before we move to adjourn? Just uh, just Jenny. on this point about Barbara's suggestions and Jean also supporting that and, and Katie as well. Um, can we could we put that on our first meeting in January? I believe that's January 4th. The next meeting is when we'll talk about we have two hearings and then we have uh, the industrial zoning uh, conversation and I, I kind of feel like and then you're going to vote on your the two remaining the lingering items from tonight I think that might be that might be about it uh, unless you want me to stick it in that meeting but otherwise I'd prefer to do it January 4th if that would be okay I just want to make it very transparent clear. and clear yep. that that's that's more appropriate okay Barbara any, you'll any, be there. any concerns um, my only concern is that that we have what is it January 29th that's the, yes. the final day and I'm I just wrote to Doug Heim and I saw some of the things that you were discussing I'm not clear where I stand in this very unusual position do I need to go out and connect signatures again or you know so so I'm looking for that kind of clarification in the in addition to what I need to do. And I need that all done by January 29th. So hopefully Doug will get back to me, but clarification from you on what you consider things that roll forward versus from, from the prior intended April 2020 agenda to April 21, uh, I'd appreciate. I still think that January 4th is realistic for that um, because we were, we're gonna reach back out to everybody who had uh, submitted articles for 2020 town meeting who didn't wanna refile for special town meeting. Um, but again, if the board wants to talk about this on the 21st, I'll put it on the agenda. I just was um, trying yeah. to organize that. I, I'm just I'm just raising it for, to, to put for my you. perspective. Yeah, because yeah. if you postpone it again from the fourth, I'm, I'm Oh yeah, no, they, they can't. They only have the the next meeting is that the, that Monday of the week that you're talking about. After that, so uh, so we did <coughs> on the fourth. Okay. They being you, us. <laughs> okay. There's a hand up, and I know we all have to go. I'm sorry. Okay. Great, great. So um, I'll take one more um, public comment, and then we'll close uh, the public comment period. Uh, Jennifer Seuss. Hi, sorry, I, I've only been able to watch part of this meeting, which is why I wasn't originally going to speak. Um, I just wanted to raise um, my experience um, with other things that's happened in town, both on the school committee and um, with Mass Avenue Quarter Project, that oftentimes um, big messy public meetings can be cathartic for the community. There's uh, both by giving people an opportunity to express their frustrations and be heard, but also I think it's really valuable for people in a room, and it could be a Zoom room obviously, to hear that there's other perspectives besides their own. And I, what I've encountered again and again is, are people who think the way I think is, is the right way and everyone else is ignoring, the, these people in power are ignoring it. 
And so being able to hear different perspectives are really valuable. And I think that we have enough very strong housing advocates in town that if we had one of those big messy meetings and not very many of them, but maybe just one, we could bring forward people who are supportive of housing to give an alternative voice to the other people who traditionally um, show up. So I wanna encourage that kind of meeting. I think that there's value in it. It's not, it's not the only value, obviously there's lots of other ways to gather information, but I think there's some value psychologically for people. Great, thank you for that perspective and for sharing your experience um, based on, on your other commitments in town. Um, Jenny, did, did you want to, I know that you've responded to a lot of our other comments about um, public forum and and um, what we'd be able to accomplish. I know that a lot of those things we've we've talked about pushing to a special future special town meeting with regard to, to housing. So that sounds like to me something that potentially timing wise would happen after we get through the warrant um, items preparing for spring town meeting. Uh, yeah, I, I think a, a bigger forum is part of the bigger, bigger process. Um, I, I certainly, I do know what Jennifer is speaking to in terms of it being cathartic in some ways. Um, I'm, I, I don't like a messy meeting though, I'll just be very honest about that. I like an organized messy meeting. Um, that would be my, my preference, but, um, but I, I, I agree that we need a space for people to actually have a conversation. I think that that's what I'm hearing and taking away. And I think um, that's been, um, there hasn't been enough of that. There could always be more. And that we, but we also want to make sure that we're, we're, do, we're, we're providing the right venue for people to do that. I think that would be that that will be part of the conversations we have about the housing production plan, um, and certainly um, other conversations that we've been talking about. I, I don't know that it exactly fits to into a town meeting per se. I, I wasn't hearing that specifically. I was hearing that it's just important to have these broader conversations to get lots of voices uh, talking about the issues and not, not only some voices, which uh, tend to go to certain meetings, but not, uh, not may not uh, always be part of the conversation. Great, thank you for clarifying. All right, um, let's see. Uh, with that, I will close public comment. Uh, are there any final, um, any other final discussion points from the board before we uh, take a motion to close our goal setting meeting this evening? All right, do I hear a motion to adjourn? Motion, second. Great, I'll take a roll call vote to close the meeting. Uh, Ken? Yes. David? Yes. Jean? Yes. Katie? Yes. And I am yes as well. Thank you so much for everyone who attended and to Jenny and Aaron for all the work you did to prepare for tonight. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night.